thanks for watching and today I just want to give you a very quick uh, motivation or intuition behind convolution of two functions because that was one thing I found very confusing at least in undergrad and probably most of grad school as well. So remember the definition of convolution f convolved with g of x is just the integral I guess let's say over r so minus infinity to infinity of f of y g of x minus y dy and the way to remember this is those two things have to sum to x so if you put f of y the other one has to be x minus y or if you put g of y the other one has to have f of x minus y and i'm claiming that Convolution is really the continuous analog of multiplication. First of all, in terms of Fourier transforms, it is because the Fourier transform of f convolved with g is just f hat convolved times g hat. So it is a multiplication, but I want to show it to you in more elementary ways. So suppose that somehow our functions are polynomials. So take, for example, uh, the two things, the two polynomials x squared plus 3x plus 5 and 2x squared plus 4x plus 7. Suppose those are functions f and g, and you just multiply them as polynomials. And think of it in general as a2x squared plus a1x plus a0 and then b2x squared plus b1x plus uh, b0. If you fold it out, you get a polynomial, I think of degree four, so something x to the fourth plus something else x cubed plus something else x squared plus something else x plus a constant term. And here's my question. Again, you're multiplying those two functions what is, let's say, the coefficient of x squared in this expansion? So question, what is the coef coefficient, okay, coefficient uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I forgot how to write coefficient. So, coefficient, okay. Anyway, what's the coefficient of x squared in this expansion. And let's call that let's call that coefficient, let's call it h of 2. So if you want the coefficient of x cubed, it would be h of 3. Okay. Well let's see. Well, what we have to do to figure out the coefficient of x squared, we really have to find the things that sum to 2. For example, we have x squared times 7. That gives you 7x squared. So if you want uh, 1 times 7, right, which corresponds to, let's say, a2 times b0. And then let's see, what else? sums to 2 in terms of the powers. Well, 3x times 4x. So 3 times 4, which gives you 12. And that would be a1 and b1. And lastly, what do we have? 5 times 2x squared. The coefficients is sum to 2. So uh, I guess a0 times b2. So, and then 5 times 2. And I think if you do it, you get 29. But the result is not important. What's important is the process. Notice what we did. We took the coefficient of f times the coefficient of g so that if you want the sum of the powers equals to 2. More importantly, notice in this multiplication, the sums of the indices has to equal to. So really, what h of 2 is, is just, and again, maybe you can rewrite this as more suggestive notation, a0b2 
plus a1 b1 plus a2 b0. Again, the sum of the two always has to be 2. Which you can just write in terms of summation notation, sum from k equals to 0 to 2 of ak, and again the sum is 2, so b of 2 minus k. So in other words, the coefficient h of 2 is sum, again sum, no, two, not important where it goes from, but it's ak, b of 2 minus k. And in fact, this works for any, you know, uh, coefficient, namely, uh, if you want like h3, you would just do the sum a k b 3 minus k. And in fact, maybe even more suggestive notation, in general, if you want, let's say, h x, That's the sum of a k b of x minus k. And it doesn't matter which index we use, let's just use y. It's the sum of a y b of x minus y. And remember, a was f, b was a g. So what this becomes, again, uh, even more suggestive notation, uh, it's not quite f of y, but if you relate the coefficients of f with the function itself, you can actually think of it as sum of f of y, g of x minus y. And lo and behold, instead of using a sum in the continuous version, you're using an integral. So really, what the convolution is, is just a continuous version of this process. If you think of f and g as like continuous polynomials, the convolution gives you the x coefficient in the multiplication of f by g. And that's why it's really a multiplication when you think of convolution. All right, hope that made a bit more sense and you're maybe not less confused, but maybe it's a little bit clearer, but uh, if you want to see more math videos, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.